KMSU. Uh, yeah, uh, Ripper Owens calling in here. Ripper, this is Dustin. How are you doing today? I'm good, Dustin. How are you? I'm excellent. Thank you so much for joining us. Yes, man. Absolutely. I'll introduce you here to my co-host, Tun. Hey, how are you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm excited to be here. I'm doing well. We got you on the line. If you're ready to go, we'll get started. I am ready. Awesome. Well, <laughs> talk to us. You've We've got the, the three tremors. Talk to us about that. What are we looking at? How, how did that come to be? Well, you know, it's one of the singers, Sean, uh, Sean Peck, who's in a band called Cage, he really started this thing. I've traveled the world doing three singer things and all-star singer things, you know, uh, in South America with Udo and, and Blaze Bailey. And, you know, in America, I did one with, with Jeff Tate and Blaze Bailey and other ones. But this one he wanted to do, he called and said, listen, I want to make a record. I, I, I want this to be a band, you know, where we have our own songs. We go out and tour as this own thing. And, you know, he sent me the stuff and it was, it's really cool because it's really, it's, uh, you know, it's not for the weak of hard rock people. It's for the people who like metal. And I like that because I do all kinds of things. And this one is over the, everything's over the top. Lyrics, artwork, everything. So we have three metal singers up there just going at it. Well, Tim, besides the, uh, the singers, you know, Harry and Sean and yourself, of course, uh, who else is uh, playing with you in the band? Well, we, we're using Sean's band Cage. At first, he didn't want to do this. He wanted to make an all-star kind of band as well, you know, get these different musicians to, well, especially record the record. Maybe touring, it would have been easier with Cage. But I think he realized here he sits with his bandmates in his hometown out there in, in San Diego, and he could just, I mean, they're so good. I mean, he's, they're younger, except Dave, who's been with Cage forever and, and you know, engineered and produced this record. Um, it's really a band that... that it was a no brainer to use these guys, you know, because they're so good and then you can rehearse, you know, you don't have to fly people in or, or show up somewhere and rehearse right before the show. These guys can be rehearsed and ready to go all the time. And so it's, it's, uh, it's exciting to do it this way. You know, that way you kind of have the same band. I think it's great because to be honest, if I want to go do a, a, a solo tour, I'll just get these guys as well. Cause I already know half my stuff. <laughs> So, I mean, you said it was kind of Sean's idea. Um, did he come to you with the, the idea of having three different versions of the same album and everything, or, or how did that happen? Or did you, do you guys talk about that? Or Well, that you know, I don't think that was the thing to start with, but what had happened was when we recorded it, I just sang the whole record. You know, I, I don't know if Harry did it first or not, but I imagine he did. I just sang, I just sang all the songs in its entirety, I might have left a few parts out thinking it wouldn't be my part. Uh, and then Sean's like, don't redo it. You know, if we, but he, he, one day he said, man, we should do our own. We should release the solo versions of these records. You know, I think the fans would like it. And, um, you know, it wasn't something he thought of at first. It's just that I think when he was mixing the record, I think he thought to himself, wow, that's, you know, Ripper's version of this is pretty cool, you know, on its own. And Harry's version is pretty cool. So, I think his wheels started turning about releasing it. And the thing is, it's a three CD pack that's like 21 bucks, and it's different than the other one. So if somebody's a giant fan of Harry or myself or, you know, Sean, they, could, they can go get this version, you know, because they definitely are different. Uh, we approach them differently, so it's, it's pretty cool. Yeah, you guys definitely, you know, put your own spin on things to make it three different sounding albums. and. It's definitely a cool idea. I don't think I've ever heard of anyone else doing that kind of uh, three different versions of the same songs uh, out on the same album. No, and I think what people also have to realize, we didn't do this after and try to change them. I probably would have changed things a little bit or added more stuff or added more screams or, you know, I might have tweaked them a little bit to make it mine sound even more different than the other versions. But it still goes to show you, even though we... We when we recorded it, we we had to use a template that we were going to kind of sing over each other, you know, so we could use it to harmonize in the chorus. So everything had to, a lot of it had to match up good enough to be able to use it on the record with all three singers. Uh, but still, you could tell by listening to my version, I still approached it differently by adding, uh, you know, more harmonies or layering it more or singing in a different style. But the melodies had to had to stay close to the same. But again, if, if 
I asked him, I said, hey, let me sing some things different if we do the solo records. He goes, no, let's, let's leave them how it is. I mean, that's what we did. So it's kind of like this is what each singer sang, sang like making the same record. So when it comes to the tour, uh, what can people expect? I, I mean, are you guys going to trade off on songs or will you have some of your own songs that are being played as well? Um, well, yeah, when we do the three trimmer songs, it's the original versions. Uh, the three of us are up there doing it. Um, and, you know, these songs are, are pretty crazy songs vocally. A lot of high notes, a lot of stuff going on. It's really uh, just a lot going on. So it's, it's nice to have another singer up there because I'm like, oh, man, I don't know if I can do it. Hey, Harry, wants to sing my part because it's like craziness. Um, but it is the show is great because we have that. But we throw in some stuff that people will know. I mean, we'll do a uh, uh, usually we throw in like a song from my Judas Priest Jugulator record. We might throw in Burning Hell. Uh, we'll throw in maybe a Painkiller. Uh, Harry Harry will get a, a Jack Panzer song in there, and, and Sean will get a, a Cage song in there. A lot of times we throw in uh, Heaven and Hell because we little pay a little tribute to Ronnie James Dio, and you know we might throw a couple other classic pre songs in there that are just kind of fun and sing along, you know, but I tried to add a little more in there. I tried to tell Sean at one point, we didn't do as much of that at first. And I'm like, listen, we're out there touring as a new band. No, you know, sometimes it's fun to throw some other stuff in there. Awesome. Well, I know you're uh, going to be coming on tour here and uh, we actually got the last show, I think uh, at the whiskey junction here in Minneapolis, uh, April 11th, you guys will be coming through. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's, I'm actually looking forward to that. And, um, I haven't been there in a while, so it kind of makes it uh, it makes it nice for me to get there. And, and I've always loved loved coming there. So, and it is it's funny because ending there, at least it's going to probably be a little better weather by then, so we'll be okay. <laughs> <laughs> of course, I I come right back to Ohio, so it's not like it's much different where I'm in Akron, Ohio. So sure, these guys in San Diego, I told them before. I said, hey, at first he wanted to, re- and we are we're hitting the the east coast and stuff but i'm like man it's not good to hit some of these places when you go there and he wanted to do it like january and february i'm like man i don't know man <laughs> you, we we might be in trouble hitting the hitting the east coast on the uh in this weather and those guys like i said san diego they're not used used to this stuff but how is the uh, whiskey junction good place yeah yeah i think it's um you know it's not not too small, but not too big. I mean, I think it's definitely an intimate uh, venue for you guys. I think the fans will dig it. Perfect. I love it. Hey, listen, I don't, I don't care if it's a small place. Uh, I always use, I always have to talk my girlfriend in the size thing, so I have to say uh, size doesn't matter. I, I, I think the same thing with, with venues, man. I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> so, well... You mentioned uh, you'll you, you know do some pre songs and whatnot, and you mentioned Jugulator a little bit. So you uh, have made a, quite a few transitions, I guess, in your musical career. Am I right? You you, you started small. Um, you were touring pretty huge with with Priest, and now you're kind of back at it. How, how how do you feel about all that? Well, I mean, I still I just did a solo show this week in front of about 750 people, so that was pretty nice and. Listen, I was in Priest. Well, people also realize I was playing in front of big crowds, a lot of festivals. I also was in Ice Earth and Ingve playing in front of the same size crowds as Priest. Uh, and and a lot of my solo tours isn't far off. You got to remember, I was in Judas Priest in the mid '90s to 2003, so the crowds weren't what they are now. Well, I mean, even now, Priest tours and plays in front of you know 2,500 to to 6,000, so it's not like they're uh, but I, I'm all over the place. Listen, I might go on, on a tour and play in front of 75 people, and then the next night I might play in front of 1,000 people. It's kind of just all over the place, and that's just how it is. Um, I still go play the big festivals solo, I, uh, and so does all the projects and bands I'm in. Uh, Three Trimmers has already, and, we, and we're going out there. But, you know, it's just you do what you do. I, have a, I do more now. I tour more places. I go more places around the world uh, than I ever have just right now. So it's kind of cool. And the pinnacle, obviously, of the a great part and, and a big thank you to it was Judas Priest. I mean, you joined someone like Judas Priest. It would have been different probably joining them right now because I think it's a little better time for heavy metal. Uh, 
than it was in 96. I mean, you know, no one, no one was doing much of anything in 96, 97, 98, 99. Um, but yeah, I mean, listen, I, I'll tell you what, I'm just lucky I can tour period. You know what I mean? If, uh, I don't, this is how I make a living. So if I'm going and getting paid to sing in front of a hundred people in, you know, uh, anywhere, I'm pretty damn happy I can do that. So, uh, I'll take anything. Well, yeah, you mentioned, um, you know, being out there. It's incredible, your workload. I mean, we've seen you've been uh, with uh, Spirits of Fire, had a, a new Revenge album. You mentioned uh, working with Ingve, uh, and we saw you come through Minnesota, I think it was last year, with the Dio hologram. I mean, yeah. you you are uh, juggling, you know, four, five, six different projects at once, it seems. Yeah, the Dio hologram tour was fantastic, and it, was, and it ended up being very successful uh, for the reviews and how people – ended up perceiving it after after this after that tour that's what was great about that so those were you know good sized crowds and those were probably close to the judas priest sized crowds not the same probably a little off but again it's a new thing but yeah i mean i'm pretty lucky that i'm in demand and people want to work with me i'm just getting ready to sing a song on my studio right now for for a, a band um not even for sure where they're at. I know they're called Cult of the Fox, so I'm not even for sure. But I, I love to sing as guests on people's records, and I do it all the time. Um, so I'm pretty lucky that I get to do it. And this year coming up, I have a lot of big things. This might be one of my biggest years ever, so it's going to be pretty huge and, and special surprises, and it's going to be a good year. Awesome, yeah. It's great everything's working out, and you know your voice is still as powerful as it's always been. And we just we got to go back to Priest uh, briefly. We just heard, you know, they got snubbed uh, from the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. What are your thoughts on that? Is that important to you, or does that mean anything? Uh, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? Well, I mean, I really don't. I, I'm not. I don't care about Judas Priest being snubbed too much myself. I mean, I'm, it's the whole genre being snubbed. Not even hard rock. I think the point is, uh, I mean, foreigners not even been up to be in there. I mean. Foreigner should be in there before any of the bands that just went in, in my opinion. Uh, Foreigners, I get in the car and I hear five to ten different songs every day when I'm driving for Foreigner, you know. Uh, so I'm just shocked if it's called Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. It just shouldn't be called Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. You know, it should be called uh, the Music Hall of Fame um, if they're going to let these people in. I mean, I'm not going to get in. I mean, Judas Priest was snubbed to be in it, and, and I guess Judas Priest snubbed me to be in it. I wasn't a band ten, just about ten years, and I'm not going to do it. But there's no. You talk about an influential band. People said they like people who, to go in there who who influence people. I'm like, how could you be any more influential than Judas Priest? Right. Uh, they they started. They're probably the, one of the you know Sabbath and then Priest that to, to do that this genre to get it going. And even the Leather and Spikes, how they started that trend, you know, in my opinion. The dual guitars, they really got pushed at. So I, uh, I'm i shocked. Um, but there's there's a lot more people than than, uh, than just Judas Priest, you know, and that's what's a shame about it, you know. Uh, it's Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, and Chubby Checker is not in there. And this guy had a song and a dance, The Twist, and it's kind of like, what? how in the hell does that even happen? <laughs> Yet, Green Day's in it, or... Uh, the big rapper guy that just went in it. I mean, how does a big rapper go into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? How does that even happen? He should go into the Music Hall of Fame. I mean, it's exciting, though, because that's a good chance I can go into the Rapper Hall of Fame. So I guess it's kind of good. I'm kind of starting a thing for that. I don't have to make a rap song. I just need to be a musician to go in. And another good chance I have, I've always wanted to do this, there's a good chance I can go into the Baseball Hall of Fame, too. Shit. I've never <laughs> listen. I've never played. I played in in little league in high school, so there's a good chance I still could go in there uh, because <laughs> musicians should be allowed to go into the baseball hall of fame. There you go. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> well, great. Um, you also uh, you've got a solo album also coming out. Is that correct, or anything else going on after this tour? Well, I am working on it, but I got so much. I mean this this is going to keep me busy. Uh, you know, till quite a ways here. Um, so I'm, uh, I mean, at least till mid April. Uh, and then I've got a lot going on after that. I, I am recording some stuff and I'm trying to get this solo record. I've been working on songs in my studio, but I'm so dang busy. 
uh, that it's hard to, to get it done, you know. But um, I'm definitely trying to work on one, and I am, you know, I have some other recording stuff I have that's going to come out and some big news and things here and there, so definitely busy. Awesome, man. Uh, again, uh, we're looking forward to seeing the three tremors here at the uh, Whiskey Junction on in April 11th, and uh, the new album looks great, and uh, we hope we can speak with you again soon, man. Yeah, listen, you got my number now, so, uh, or you know, we'll do it anytime you want. Closer to the show, we'll do it again. I figure I'll, I, I'm always going to put my foot in my mouth, so let's do it again. <laughs> All right. Awesome. Thanks a lot, man. All right, guys. All right, thanks, guys. Have a good one. All right, bye.